Hello again, Peter Stoll, clarinetist in Toronto, Canada here with a micro module now on circular breathing. So just wanted to talk about this a little bit and does it work on the clarinet? It's a technique that's pretty common to the woodwinds and the brass. It actually comes very interestingly from way, way, way back uh, to seemingly very different sources, uh, which would be blowing glass and snake charming. But when you think about it in both cases, you need to maintain positive air pressure outwards without a break. Uh, certainly with, you know, when you're blowing molten glass, you, you need to keep the glass away from you. And when you're charming a snake, you're hypnotizing a, a cobra, say, out of a basket with the vibrations from your, your shawm or zokra, uh, you know, you better not stop the vibrations because that's the only thing that's keeping the snake from striking. So what is circular breathing? Circular breathing is uh, a trick technique where instead of me simply breathing in and then blowing out through the instrument directly from the lungs, I let some air gather in my cheeks, either letting them puff out or not so much. And then I squeeze the air from my cheeks through the clarinet to maintain the sound while I breathe inwards. So it looks like this. So as you can see and hear, uh, there can be a little bit of disruption to the sound. So it's tough to do it on long notes, although some, some players can. And for everything I'm talking about, somebody out there can do it, you know, flawlessly. But this is giving you a sense of kind of, you know, your typical professional, what are you going to get? Circular breathing is great for things with continuous sound, like trills, where you're not just holding one note. So... Uh, certainly no issue with range but the higher I go the louder I need to go if I try to do this really softly then I if, as I go to the circular I kind of lose it so I need a certain amount of oomph to keep it going another place that circular breathing works really well is when you're running through passage work <laughs> you know, and so on. It's basically wherever you, you're just not stuck on the sound of a single note. So you don't hear the, the, the slight change. And you notice I have a deviated septum. And so, you know, you hear a little bit of sound. Some people get a snorting sound when they do it. So it's certainly, though, very, very dependable. Um, once you've learned it, it takes a while to learn. It, you have to sort of get used to this idea of doing the two things at one. It's sort of like that. Um, and uh, at the same time, and it works on the bass. You know, and so on. Same kind of, you know, issues and limitations. How would you notate it? Um, you know, often, if you just write unbroken lines, people might figure out, I think I have to circular this. Or uh, you could write a little arrow that just loops over itself like that, you know, uh, and as always, the key is king and queen, which is to say the key is key. Make sure you have, uh, you know, some kind of explanation at the front of the part, including not only the score to an ensemble piece, but in the individual players parts. So that's a little bit about circular breathing. It's certainly nice to be freed up from having to stop to take breaths. And uh, so gives you a sense of uh, where you might be able to use it.